There are three rainbows in the Bible after the account in Genesis, and they are represented by the glory, the throne, and a crown. When Ezekiel sees his visions of God, he says, Like the appearance of a rainbow in a cloud on a rainy day, so was the appearance of the brightness all around it. This was the appearance of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. On the island of Patmos in Revelation 4, John sees a rainbow around the throne, in appearance like an emerald. John will then see another vision in Revelation 10 of an angel coming down from heaven clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow was on his head, his face was like the sun, and his feet like pillars of fire. From these verses, there are three applications of the rainbows in the Bible. Let's look at their significance in our lives. First, the rainbow is a sign of hope in the aftermath of judgment. Just like the rainbow in Noah's day penetrated the clouds of judgment, God's glory penetrates the dark clouds of sin and its effect on the earth. Second, the rainbow surrounds the throne of Christ. It is his filter of judgment upon which he views the world. He sees his people through the filter of the covenant of grace. Those who are around his throne are in covenant relationship with him, and he promises to never bring judgment on them. Third, the rainbow is the kingly crown. Heaven will be populated with people and tribes of all different colors, and the rainbow is a sign of perfect unity within diversity, a sign of royalty. The rainbow as a crown will be an outward sign that judgment has passed, and we have eternal life under a covenant of grace. We are doomed to die because of sin. That is the flood. God sent Jesus to redeem us, to save us from calamity. God's judgment came down on Christ, just as his judgment also came down on the wicked of Noah's time. Just as there was only one ark, there is only one person by which we can be saved. Noah and his family were spared by the ark, just as the church is spared by Christ. Now, Noah accepted the blueprint given to him by God and acted upon it. Us believers must do the same. God has given us a blueprint for our lives, the reason God put us on the planet. What's God's dream for the world that he wants to accomplish through you? Now, imagine the ark still being under construction when the rains came, because Noah delayed acting on his God-given calling after receiving the blueprint from God. Imagine if Noah had taken shortcuts on the ark's construction. The boat would have sank from the holes. Imagine if Noah had just sat back and said, whatever will be, will be. God will build it if he wants it. But God demonstrates in this account yet again that we are co-laborers with Christ. Each part of the body has its part to play with Christ at the head. Grace alone didn't save Noah. Grace plus obedience brought about salvation. Noah built the ark because he believed God at his word. Even though building such a large boat so far from the ocean looked ridiculous. Even though it took many decades to build. When God said he will destroy the earth, Noah believed him. And because Noah believed, therefore he acted. Belief and action are inseparable. True faith will inspire action. If Noah did not have faith in what God said, he never would have built the ark, and he would have perished in the flood along with his family. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And it's through faith that we are saved. Noah's life of faith in God shows us the necessity of placing our faith in Christ alone who is the true ark of salvation that shelters us safely through the judgment. For it is by grace you have been saved, through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast.